have an important lot the yellow jersey in the Volta la Comunidad Valenciana. And the question is, is this actually big news? Is it small news? What does it actually mean? And I think sometimes people with Remco get a bit too excited. And you could say, Charlie, that why are you making a video? Remco just lost a yellow jersey. But I think it's important to show maybe where his limitations are and maybe why it's not that much stress. Number one, it's not that much stress because it's February. No one really cares how well you go in February. His big goal is obviously Vuelta. And then he'll have smaller week-long stage races. I guess this one he wants to win. But if we look at this stage, how much time do you lose in the end? About 41 seconds. So, you know, not too crazy. Okay, Vlasov isn't Pogaccia, but even so. It was on gravel, and we saw in the Montalcino stage in the Giro last year, he didn't exactly enjoy gravel. Um, and if we look at the final climb, it's really, really steep, which, again, I don't think suits Remco necessarily. Despite him being a very small guy, so you think, what's Pekila White should be good? I think some people generally find it easy to put power on the flat, and he might be one of those people. So on the less steep climbs, he thinks it goes better. But you can see here, 9%, 12%, 9%, 13%. That's a very grim climb. Now, um, we can look at some power data as well, but I don't know how useful that is because this is the, the end of the stage here. Um, sorry, where is the end of the stage? This is the end of the stage. This is the segment here. So you can see that Remco climbed about the same seed as Valverde. Um, it's sort of hard to tell exactly what the results were in compa comparison to the Strava results just because like Sivakov looks like he gained 10 seconds compared to Valverde on this part just because he maybe left more in the tank but you can see the results here Valverde and Remco they finished 10 seconds apart but maybe Valverde just started ahead of everyone else when he got into this section which is not true so this is Valverde's power data here 6.2 watts per kilo for 18 and a half minutes which in reality isn't that big Valverde did have a back or like a rear wheel puncture as well but again like not really that impressive to be honest for a 20 minute climb like okay it's slightly longer than 20 minutes if we actually look at the full climb 26 minutes at six was per kilo is obviously strong like i'm not saying it's not but we think like pagaccia was doing 40 minutes at 6.3 up practically tv in the terreno last year so again it's not crazy which is why it's actually more surprising remco got spat but this is Sivakov's data here you can see his cadence as well as like 80 cadence but i think what's interesting is to look at remco um i can't remember if he has take cadence on but i think that's one thing if you watch it back which obviously i can't show you the footage is that his cadence was really low and i think for remco oh he does have cadence that he actually really enjoys climbing at high cadence so you can see here you might say 84 but it seemed like on these steeper parts he was really struggling like you can see he's going like 60 cadence around these corners and i don't think that's the best way of remco climbs so if we're going to have a look at his other data um from previous stages and we'll get to see that actually it's not like this and again like it seems like maybe he just slightly like underestimated like the sort of stiff severeness but this part here like if we look at this it's like 46 seconds 68 cadence at 10k an hour and i just don't think that's how remco climbs the best and you can see that some of the other parts again here is like um nine percent eight cadence like, i don't know i just think maybe it's just you know what you see and not necessarily what you think it is but it seemed to me that he definitely didn't have as high cadence as maybe he normally prefers um if we go back to valenciana stage one which obviously he won um it was a less steep climb and generally if we look at his cadence from a junior like when he was time trialing obviously slightly different situation because of the gear restrictions but you can see here 95 cadence and you might say okay that's not a huge bit but 92 cadence compared to like 60 to 80 cadence it's probably quite a big difference for remco so the question is is like maybe he just had the wrong gearing on and that's why again i don't think it's as big an issue maybe he just doesn't like the steep climbs he doesn't like having a lack of momentum um momentum that other people sort of do um so yeah in conclusion i'm not sure it's a huge thing i think it's early season, there's no need to panic for big Remco, but it's, I mean, it just goes to show like he is not unbeatable, um, but I think he just is on certain terrain he's really good at. And I think definitely the less steep climbs he seems to go better at, and maybe gravel he doesn't like too much, but I mean, he got beaten by Fuglsang, Ciccone, Valverde, Peo Bilbao, I mean, like they're good, but they're not outrageous. Um, but anyway, those are my thoughts about Remco. What do you think, like, is he, yesterday, I, like two days ago, three days ago, I said he's the best bloke in the world, um, and people underrated him and now people say oh he's overrated i think um i think it doesn't really mean too much what remco does at this time of year um and i think in reality it will be what he can do in the welter um which i guess will have a lot of steep bugs and it'll be interesting to see what he does maybe he's just like Froome. Froome when he lost on the angler who just didn't have enough gears and then from then on he always run 32 cassette on the steepest climbs often with a 38 or 36 on the front and maybe remco will be the same will run 36 32 and then i'll have no issues on the steep stuff. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video and see you in the next one.